today on Main Street Living. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is written in Numbers chapter 11. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. As soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. And Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, 
and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John's Gospel, the seventh chapter. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God the Father of, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from St. John's Gospel, the seventh chapter. Are you thirsty? Can you think of a time in your life when you were terribly thirsty? I remember a time when my wife and I went on what we thought would be just a short hike in the woods near Houston, Texas. It was summertime, but we didn't take any water along because we thought we wouldn't be out that long. Well, then we got lost and super thirsty. Thankfully, we finally made it back to our car where water bottles awaited us. Can you think of a time in your life when you were terribly thirsty? Maybe it's right now if you're watching this from a hospital bed and not allowed to drink because of some medical procedure. When you're really thirsty, thoughts of water consume you. You cry out for water and your tongue can get so dry that you, you can't even do that. You can be so thirsty that you even lose your ability to speak. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. This is what Jesus says to the thirsty. When Jesus said something similar to the Samaritan woman at the well, she thought he was talking about physical water. But he was talking about a much greater water for a much greater thirst to quench. He was talking about quenching the thirst, namely a spiritual thirst. When Jesus said something similar to the Samaritan woman at the well, she thought he was talking about physical water, but he was talking about a much greater water for a much greater thirst to quench. He was talking about quenching the thirst of the soul that Psalm 42 speaks of, saying, My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Everyone who drinks of this water, namely the water of this world, will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. Friend, the waters of this world, with all their promised pleasures, cannot quench the real and greater thirst you have, the thirst in your soul for God. Now you can try to slake your thirst with a bottle of booze, sex, money, drugs, fame, and fortune, but you'll only be thirsty again. And some of you listening to this message find yourself as if on a hike with no water. There's a void, a hunger, a terrible thirst in you that you cannot seem to satisfy, and it's killing you. It's a thirst in your conscience to have peace, true joy, and life. Now who can quench that kind of thirst? The thirst for a good conscience, the thirst for peace with your Creator, to have water that quenches the uncertainty of this life. This life is full of drought, the drought of uncertainty, isn't it? I mean, the bad news you hear of the stock market and of pandemics leaves you thirsty for certainty, the certainty of how can you have life that lasts, that's, that cannot be dried up by death. Come to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden, come to me, all you who are thirsty, come to me and drink. Jesus is the true well of salvation that never runs dry. He preached this gospel lesson in John 7 on the last day of what was called the Feast of Booths. This was an Old Testament feast that coincided with harvest time. And a tradition that later developed with this feast was to have water taken from the pool of Siloam and then to pour it out at the side of the altar. A priest would do this, taking the water from the pool of Siloam, because the water was said to be a, a sort of living water, for it was replenished from a spring in the rock. 
So Jesus was saying during this feast that he is the true living water and rock of our salvation. From his pierced heart on the altar, the cross, the water and the blood would flow. And really the living water that he gives is the Holy Spirit and he is the well of salvation. This is why we Christians confess in the Nicene Creed that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. Jesus yielded up his spirit when he died on the cross and then his side was pierced with that spear that pierced his very heart from which the water and the blood flowed. And then just 50 days after he rose from the dead, the Holy Spirit would be poured out at Pentecost. Now what we have to understand about Pentecost is that originally it was an Old Testament feast. When the Israelites entered the Promised Land, first they celebrated the Feast of First Fruits. They brought a sheaf of the first fruits of the harvest of the Promised Land. But then 50 days after that, they celebrated the Feast of Pentecost. Pentecost means 50 days. They would present a, a grain offering of new grain to the Lord. This all points ahead to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Because see, Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection, the first one to be raised from the dead. Fifty days after his resurrection came Pentecost. The Holy Spirit was poured out on his disciples, and now the new grain is offered to the Lord, namely the new harvest of many a soul that's converted to Christ. And so today in the church, we celebrate Pentecost and all its fulfillment. We celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that has gathered people of all nations, tongues, and tribes to believe in Jesus as the Savior. Jesus has kept his promise. He is for us the well of salvation. He has poured upon us the living water of the Holy Spirit with his cleansing blood. And we are reconciled to God and have peace with him. He has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. And yet, by the Holy Spirit, we Christians are united together from east to west. The Holy Spirit has called us by the gospel by the good news of our salvation as living water that forever quenches our thirst. And not only that, the Holy Spirit fills our hearts and flows out of us as rivers of living water. Why? So that we now become springs, little wells of life, as we share the gospel to others. Martin Luther puts it like this. Therefore, he who believes in Christ and is supplied with water by him is also in a position to console and refresh others with this drought. Even if all the world were confronting him, he could dispense enough words of comfort for all. When the Lord says here that he will give people to drink, he does not intend to do this with a spoon. He will not siphon it through a pipe or tap it from a spigot. No streams of comfort shall be theirs, and all the thirsty shall be satisfied with a boundless supply. And so, for example, when death and war come, a pastor can fortify a whole army to defy death. By means of one consoling word and verse, he can dispel and wash away all dread of death. With what? With the water of life. Thus Martin Luther. We as the church have the living water of the Holy Spirit flowing out of us from our hearts and through our mouths as we confess the creed and pray the Lord's Prayer. This is our common language and tongue that we speak to the world, namely the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. We declare the mighty works of God of Christ's death and resurrection that saves us from the deadly thirst of our sins. Whether you're a father, a mother, a son, a daughter, a husband, wife, or worker, wherever God has placed you in your station of life, there you are his spring to confess the gospel, to give living water to the thirsty soul. Let us then boldly confess and water this thirsty world of uncertainty with the gospel saying to them this, Are you thirsty? Christ quenches your thirst 
by his all-sufficient death for you. He has quenched the fires of hell for you. He has doused the devil who accuses you. Jesus is for you the true fountain of youth. You drink of him by faith and need never thirst again, for God's love and mercy is forever yours. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Oh, my children,
thank you for tuning in into Main Street Living this morning. It's my hope you've been blessed by this presentation. If you're able to attend services, I'd like to invite you to worship with us. If you're close to the Plainview area, please join us at Zion Lutheran Church, Plainview, Nebraska. This broadcast is dependent on the financial support of viewers like you. We need your help for this broadcast to continue. You can help by sending a contribution of any amount to the address below. The website also has several ways in which to contribute. It also contains much more information about the program and also links to other LCMS websites. Thank you again for joining us today and have a blessed week this week. We'll see you again next week at this time on this station. This program is completely funded by you as viewers. Secondly, we utilize LCMS pastors of the broadcast area to present the message. We do this so you can be assured you are hearing a message grounded in the teachings of the Bible. Even though the area pastors give the presentations, they are not involved in administration or business of keeping the show on the air. The business is handled by a group of lay church members who generously give of their time, training, and talents to keep the program going. Over the years, this has been proven to be a winning formula as we are frequently receiving comments from viewers that they enjoy this effort. So I invite you to join us each week as we worship our Lord through the technology of television. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Main Street Living. This program airs weekly at this time on this station. If this program has been a blessing to you, be sure to tell your friends and relatives they can tune in as well. You can get additional information by going to our website, www.mainstreetliving.com.